Hi, thanks for watching. We have this weird looking problem, kind of simple, but we got a big number on the right side. We have n factorial equals 479,1600. And I don't know if I have to say this, but n is a positive integer, right? I mean, it wouldn't really make sense any other way, but n is going to be a positive integer, and we have to solve for n. So before I get started, I want to say this would probably be a terrible contest problem because the only good method I know how to solve it is to get the prime factorization of 479,1600. And if it's a contest problem, they probably don't want you to have a calculator and doing this with a calculator or a computer is going to be a pain. So I'm just going to tell you the prime factorization. It's two to the 10th times three to the fifth, five squared times seven times 11. And generally when I have a, a big number like this and I need the prime factorization, I won't do it by hand because that's going to be tedious. So what I do, I have a prime factor calculator on my webpage. I'll provide a link in the description. But I use that at my laptop here to find the prime factorization. What it also gets me is it gets me all the divisors. I don't know if you can see this, but the divisors of 479,1600, it filled up the whole page. So. But all I really needed was, I didn't need all that, I just needed the prime factorization. And the factorial is just defined to be the multiplication of all these integers like this all the way to one. The reason the prime factorization is so helpful is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic tells us that a prime factorization is unique. So if n factorial is the same number as this 479,1600, then they have the same prime factorization. So that means n factorial is going to have the same prime factorization. Where it gets really useful is with factorials. Like let's just look at 7 factorial, for example. You know, it's looking at the primes in this number. We have 3, 2, 5, and 7. But now even though 7 factorial is a fairly large number, it doesn't contain any other primes. Right? There's no way for there to be an 11, a 13, or a 17 in 7 factorial. So what we can do is we can use this prime factorization and it can set a ceiling. It can actually set a ceiling and a floor on what, what, n, what n can be. Because looking at all the primes in this factorization, right? we have 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, but it's what we don't have. We don't have 13, we don't have 17, 19, 47, whatever. We don't have any of those other higher primes. So technically it could be higher than 11, but we know that n is gonna be less than 13 because we don't have any 13. So there's no way it can be a 13. And likewise, we know it has to be at least 11. So then how can we figure out if n is 11 or 12 without multiplying it all the way out? Well, let's just look real quick at 11 factorial. We can compare this to our prime factorization and we see that we have the 11. Okay, so that's a match. We have the seven. We can write 10 as five times two. So then we have a five squared here. Maybe we can just kind of cross off stuff as we find it. Then for threes, we notice, okay, we have, this we can write as two times three. So we have three, one three, three squared. This is three squared, so all together we have four threes. But the problem is here we want to have five threes. Then similarly we can look at twos, right? This is a two squared. Uh, this is two cubed. Here we have a two, so we have one, three, four, seven, eight twos, but we need to have ten twos. So clearly what is happening is eleven factorial is not going to work. If we look what we're missing, we're missing 2 squared, and we're missing a 3, and that's 12. So our answer must be, we must have 12 factorial, and so therefore n equals 12. 